Fred's were a talk show host, they'd be Oprah. First she's fat, then she's running marathons, doing her show in those tight jeans. And she's back at some tropical island fat camp. Reds in first place for 53 days. They were fat and happy. Then they lost eight straight to give the NL Central over to St. Louis. Now, though, winners of three in a row, pulling back within one of the Cardinals for our Sports Center showcase, including this weekend. The Reds and Cards play 10 more times, but after this weekend, they do not meet again until late August. So this is a big series. Reds at Bush since he won back to St. Louis as they open it up. Jason Simontacci. Five and one. 3.00 coming in. Who is this guy? Well, he played in the Italian league where he made 1800 bucks a month. He used to drive cabs and tow trucks. He was probably the guy that towed your car. And you know what? He still lives with mom and dad. It's an all-American story. Top one, Reds one-on-one -on -one out. Simon Tachi gets Sean Casey to ground into the 4-6-3. And that ends the inning. Top two, Reds with runners on the corners and one out. And there it is again, the 4-6-3 DP. And Simon Tachi gets out of it. Top four, Juan and Carnacion gets a change up and he gets all of it. Two run shot is 15th and Carnacion three for three. This guy's got 13 hits in his last 30 at bats. 2-1 Cincy. Bottom five, Albert Pujols with two guys on. Up the middle. Placido Palacio coming in. Two holes, two for two with two RBI, and we are tied at two. Top six, Reds with the bases loaded, two outs. Big spot for Simon Tachi. Gets Taylor to pop up in foul territory. Mike Matheny's over there. And that ends the inning. Simon Tachi done. Went seven. Gave up two earned on seven hits. Looked good again. What a story this kid's been. Bottom seven. Still tied at two. Cards with one on. Palanco to left. One hops off the wall. Fernando Vina comes in, Polanco a double, he was two for four, three, two St. Louis, and that's big because the Cardinals are 30 and one when they lead after seven. So we go to the eighth, Reds with two on two out, Steve Klein gets Russell Brannion, and Brannion has lumber issues. Take another look, you can prove yourself doing this. That's a bruise. All right, top nine, Reds still down three, two. Taylor's trying to steal third, thrown out by Matheny. Matheny, your thoughts? He's fired up two outs. That was big because next up, Austin turns and he singles to center. So the tying run could have scored if it weren't for Matheny's arm. Red's still alive, though. Todd Walker got a chance, and Jason Isring has him. Gets him with a big loop, the off speed pitch, and the Cardinals win 3 2. 17 save and 19 chances for Izzy. That after he blew his second save of the year the night before. Chris Rietzma, 0 and 6, 4.79 in his last seven starts. Cardinals snap the Reds' three-game winning streak, so St. Louis now two up on Cincy atop the NL Central. During his short Major League tenure, Albert Pujols has beaten up the Reds. He was two for two Friday, drove in two of the three Cardinal runs. His career batting average against Cincy, 375, highest versus any team he's played at least 10 times. Pujols has also driven in 18 runs in 27 games against the Red Lakes. From Red Lakes to Red Sox, Braves first three of Fenway. Gary Sheffield got the new elbow pad. now. The regulations say you cannot wear a protection pad on your elbow that exceeds 10 inches. That's close. First inning facing John Burkett, the former Brave, and well, the pad didn't help there. Bottom one, Greg Maddox. He could use a pad here on his calf. Coming back from that calf injury after his start was pushed back, and Carlos Baerga goes off his ankle, goes out to a single. Maddox did stay in the game. He went five shutout innings. Or went five innings, allowed just the one run on three hits. 1-1 in, in the fifth, he's Lockhart up the middle. Darren Bragg comes in, Johnny Damon bottles it. Would have scored anyway, 2-1 Braves. Seventh inning, 2-on-2 out by Erga. Chris Hammond. Chipper, not quite. Jason Veritek gets waved in. By Erga, 2-4, for four. that ties it at 2. So Manny's on deck. They're going to walk Noma Gassiapara. And that loads the bases in a 2-2 game with two outs for Manny. This is a big spot facing Darren Holmes. And in Boston, they call this Mike Greenwell power. Deep enough to get to the track. Manny two for 10 since coming back. Ninth inning, Gary Sheffield facing Tim Wakefield, still 2-2. Two -two. And Sheffield gets a hold of one off the scoreboard. Lead-off double for Sheffield. This after Atlanta left the bases loaded in the fifth, sixth, and the eighth innings. Still in the ninth, Benny Castillo with two outs, and Wakefield can't quite get that third out. 
Castilla goes down to get the knuckle, and the Braves going to win the game 4-2. Maddox, the no decision, so he still hasn't lost in his last 11 starts. Braves 8-1 in their last nine overall. They are 13-3 in interleague play this year. Red Sox, on the other hand, lousy. 1-5 in their last six, an interleague record of 5-11. John Burkett was 7-0 in his first nine starts this year. Burkett now 0-3 in his last four starts. Yankee Stadium is next. Yankee Stadium. Mets and Yanks, Subway Series again. Bottom three, Bernie Williams, two on. The count is full. Jeff D'Amico outside. Williams walks, base is loaded. Watch it again. K-Zone. Looks like a strike. It's called a ball. D'Amico frustrated. Robin Ventura, base is loaded. He's got 15 career grand slams. And his great year continues. Wonder if the Mets regret not having him. Drives in two, his only hit of the game. Yanks up 3-1. Yankee fans loving the ex-Met Ventura, that is for sure. Next man up, Jorge Posada. Free run home run. His 12th of the year, Yanks up 6-1. Top four, Mets down by that 6-1 count. Mo Vaughn showing signs. His third home run. All right. In his last two games, eighth of the year, Mets within three at 6-3. Bottom five, Bobby Jones pitching to Posada. Yanks up 6-5, Posada this time from the right side of the plate. Two-run home run, Yanks up 8-5. Posada, fourth time in his career that he's homered from each side of the plate in the same ball game. Jones can't believe it. Posada, loving it. El Duque, second career relief appearance, top nine. Tima Perez flying out. El Duque's first career save. First appearance off the DL. Yanks win 11-5. Posada, five RBIs. Ventura, four RBIs. Now has 19 home runs and 57 runs batted in. Last year, Zemet had 21 homers and 61 RBIs the whole season. Mike Mussina goes five innings for his 11th win of the season. Tough White Sox, Paul Canerco focused. Top two, Cubs up three, zip two on. Corey Patterson, shot to right. It's a three-run home run. It's his seventh homer of the year. Cubs up six, zip. Top three, it's seven nothing. Just Runners at the corners. Patterson to Ray Durham. Same jump. Issue. Bill Miller scores, so the Cubs are up eight, zip. Figure it's over. Figure the heck with it. Last time the. Sox came back from a deficit of eight runs or more. 1978, Paul Canerco not enthused at this point. I'm going to take nothing. I mean, uh, it doesn't look good. I mean, because it didn't look like they were slowing down any either. It's not an issue a lot. And Bottom four, it's eight nothing France. Chicago. White Sox starting to try to get some things going. Canerco's hitting the head. It didn't really hurt, but it just totally dazed me. I got it on the fastball. I wasn't really adamant. I just said, I'm not coming out of the game. I'm fine. You know, that was it. They're going to stay in. Next at bat against Kerry Wood. Take that. Two run home run, 19th of the year. The White Sox starting to slowly come back, gaining confidence. We start getting back in the game. You got 8 to 4, and everybody just starts getting that momentum, and then you start really pushing for the win. Bottom six, two on, White Sox down 8-6. Maglio Ordonez bloops it. That's going to drive in Kenny Lofton. It's going to drive in Ray Durham. And all of a sudden, we are tied at eight runs apiece. And the next man up is Paul Canerco. And Canerco is going to come through again. in unison on the yes. Canerco's second homer of the game, 20th of the year. White Sox up, 10 to eight. Canerco should indeed be an all-star. Bottom eight, his fourth hit of the game. He goes four for four. On Thursday, he went four for five, so he's eight for his last nine. Drove in four runs in this one. I just think it reaches a point where you just get sick of being average, you know? Um, Pretty much for a year and a half now, we've been mediocre. Starting in April last year, all the way up until now, and I think people just kind of, same guys, you know, just kind of get tired of it, you know, and hopefully we've 
this is the last time we get tired of it. Now we take off and, and go well for a while. White Sox winning at 13 to 9. First time the White Sox have won a game in which they trailed by eight or more runs since June 13th, of 1978. The A run comeback matches the largest deficit overcome by a winning team this season. And is left handed. He's got three of those 10 home runs. Top two, though. Fonz to Scott Hatterberg, flip it to Mulder, and they retire. Barry Lamar. Top two, one nothing A's. Miguel to out of having a rough day. Hey. Can't handle it. Reggie Sanders is safe at first. The very next play, Benito Santiago came into the game 75 years old. And again, Tejada has issues. Sean Dunson followed with an RBI and single to tie it up. Giants down 2 1 in the third. Jeff Kent takes Mulder deep. Two run shot. Giants have the 3 2 lead. Top four, runner in first, Hanneberg. Fields to Tejada covering for the force. Return throw home, though. And boy, Miguel Tejada's having a tough night. Three errors in four innings for Tejada, who came into the game with only seven errors all year. Top five, Rich Aurelia robbed by Tejada. Top shelf, full extension, and he sticks the landing. Bottom six, Mark Ellis. This guy has never hit a major league home run. And there it goes. Mark Ellis has just hit a foul ball. Two pitches later, and he wants that first Major League home run. It's his first one. Give it up. Say hello to a little friend. Mark Allen, solo on that one, pal. Four, first career Major League home run. And there it is. The A's win 10 to 6. Barry Bonds goes one for four, including his 99th walk of the year. Levon Hernandez, the loss, he gives up six earned in four and two thirds. Hernandez has now allowed 16 earned runs in his last three starts. Dodgers Angels, we go to Hollywood, taking a look at L.A. rivalries. Kings went 3-1 against the Ducks in the National Hockey League. Lakers went 3-1 against the Clips in the NBA. Dodgers lead the Angels 2-1. Football, forget about it. Rams are in St. Louis. Raiders are in Oakland. Both, of course, used to play in Los Angeles. This week, they play in Week 6. Bottom four, bottom four Troy Gloss, three-run home run. 15th of the year. Three-run shot. We're tied at three. Next pitch in the Hayes. Brad Fulmer. Off the foul pole, but we all know off the foul pole is a fair ball. That's the irony of the foul pole. Four or three angels, and then it gets interesting. Alex Cora over the head of Tim Salmon. Mark Luzalanek coming in. Adam Kennedy over everybody. George Fabregas is going to get it. Great hustle by Dennis Cook, the pitcher to the plate. And Cora, a developing situation out at the plate. Top seven, Sean Green at the plate. Kennedy's going to go to tag Paul LaDuca. LaDuca's going to hit the ground. Scott Spezio is going to throw a second to get LaDuca, and he says, you know what? I'm not even dealing with this. Forget about it. Top eight, tied at five, Bruce Atlantic, Darren Erstad. I got it. I got it. You know what? I have no idea where it is. Cesar Esturiz scores. Adrian Beltre forces second. He thought, of course, Erstad was going to make the catch, but just lost sight of the baseball. So the Dodgers up 6-5, they're up 7-5, when Eric Gagne to Darren Erstad, who was the tying run at the plate, brings him up and sits him down. Gagne's 29th save, leading the majors in that category. L.A. wins it 7-5. Cruz Atlantic, 2 for 4, drives in 2, had only one RBI in his previous 15 games. Leducas, fourth straight game with two hits. Granaheim only their seventh loss in the last 26 games at home. Rockies and the Mariners, bottom one. Edgar Martinez, second game back from the DL. One hit in the game, and this is it. Right field off the wall. Ichiro scoring from second, and Edgar two second. Watch the hammy, please. <laughs> Got there okay. Top four, Rockies down two zip. Larry Walker, deep right. 17th of the year. Rockies down 2-1. The top of the fifth, it's Benny Agbayani. This is a monster shot. His fourth of the year ties the game at two. Joel Pinheiro on the uh, hill for Seattle. Catcher Dan Wilson wanted the pitch on the outside corner. And this is on the inside part of the plate. And Agbayani crushes it. Bottom five, two outs. Martinez walked and Carlos Guillen up the middle. So we have runners on first and second with two out. And the next man up is Brett Boone. A three-run home run for Boone. His 10th of the year. And Seattle wins it 6-2. Pinheiro, complete game, second of his career. Struck out three. 
and gave up six hits. 50th win of the season for Seattle. Had their 50th win a year ago on June 14th. They're now a season high 21 games over 500. Padres and Royals in Kansas City. This is Royals rookie Miguel Senzio. Flashback to his big league debut in April against the White Sox. He threw 16 pitches, all of the more balls, 16 consecutive balls, and it was a little bit upset. Now back to Friday, top one, he marks, he walks Mark Kotze, and then Brian Klesko walks, and then, now it's a walk, so he's safe over there. Then Bubba Trammell walks. This guy's walking the ballpark again. Asensio retired only two of his nine batters. He walked five guys. Threw only 17 strikes in 45 pitches. Bottom three, Mike Sweeney ties his own club record by homering in his fourth straight game. He also did it last season. It's a five-run KC seven. Sweeney with the bases loaded on a 3-0 pitch. Rips one down the line. Three-run score on the double. Sweeney two for four. Drove in five. And the Royals win big 14-10. Sweeney, this guy leads the majors with a 367 batting average. He's hit in a season-high 11 straight games. The Royals have won four in a row, matching their season high. Rolla Bonia has a career-high four hits. D'Angelo Jimenez went four for four. Back in baseball top two, Ryan Thompson facing Santana. Corey Koski on his 29th birthday. The backhand bare hand with a small assist from the leather. That's a web, Jim. Bottom two, Ben Sheets facing A.J. Przinski. And Przinski to the Euchre seats. Two-run shot, 2-0. Two Minnesota take another look. It goes off the Bud Selig light sign. A lot of issues with Bud out there in Minnesota. Contract this, Krasinski's fifth. And of course, there are Ben Sheets and Doug Mankiewicz bobbleheads. They were Olympia, we'll Olympic teammates. Johan Santana pitched really well. Brings up Eric Young, next batter on Belliard. Santana, 9 Ks. Don't worry, Milwaukee fans. Packers training camp opens very soon. And you've got Terry Glenn to look forward to. Twins win 5-1. They stay six up on the White Sox in the AL Central. Minnesota. Even though he's going to be a free agent after the season. Kind of puts the Indians in a tough spot. Tommy can veto any trade. But if he leaves after the season, the Indians are left with nothing. Indians home to take on Arizona. CC Sabathia. Junior Spivey. Down he goes. Top two, Greg Colburn. Down he goes. Then it's Jose Guillen. Ring him up, sit him down. Sabathia retire the first seven batters of the game. Bottom four, Travis Fryman at the plate. Tony Womack trying to turn two. They are unable to do so. Great hustle by Fryman. And then Benjamin Broussard singles to right with two on. Fryman comes in, and Cleveland's up by the count of one nothing. Watch Milton Bradley as he's going to get out of the way of the baseball. Had the ball hit him, he would have been out. But Bradley, you know, he's got game. He got out just in time. Still in the fourth. Indians up two zip. Chris Magruder up. And a shot to right. Three run home run. Third of the season. Cleveland's up 5 nothing. Two batters later, Ellis Burks. Got to wonder about his future. Even though at his advanced age, he still has ability. 13th of the year. Cleveland's up seven zip. Bottom five, Matt Manti. Coming back from major elbow surgery. Gets Bradley swinging. And bottom seven, Jim Tomey says, you may end up trading me, but I can still play. 22nd home run of the year, Indians. Go on to win 8-2. And with Cologne gone, the Indians hope CC Sabathia will be able to be the ace. Pitch like one here. Gave up just one earned run in seven and two thirds. Manti, you saw his return, his first appearance since April of last season. Didn't give up a run in one and a third. Marlins Devil Rays in St. Pete. That's Travis Phelps, 89th round pick. That's the lowest pick ever to make the major leagues. And he earned his money in this at bat. Eighth inning with Tampa Bay up 4 0. There's a guy on second. It's Luis Castillo and Mike Lowell's up here. Lowell and Phelps battle for 13 pitches. Lowell currently second in voting for third baseman among National League All Stars. The major league leader with 31 doubles. Castillo's trying to steal third and then go on the 3 2 pitch. And, you know, he's got to keep running back and forth. The battle continues until Phelps wins. Lowell 0 for 4. After walking Cliff Floyd, it's Derek Lee. Day. That's a buck. 
that pitch. Check this out. Ball slips out of Phelps' hand as he delivers. Lee doesn't know what's coming here. Yeah? Now here's the 3-0. Gets the green light. Runners on second and third. Deep to center. Phelps, despite all the issues, worked a scoreless eighth. The Marlins go down 5-0. Devil Rays have won three straight overall and five of the last seven matchups between these two teams. Will first three at the ballpark, Battle of Texas. Park during the day is pretty good. 3-0, 5.16, that's not so great, but 3-0 is good. This one, however, played at night, where, as you can see, he is brutal. Top two, Orlando Merced. Case in points, although this one is kind of still during the day, you know, twilight and everything. 2-0 Astros, Merced's fourth, he was two for three. Bottom three, Roy Oswald. He's a good pitcher, but A-Rod's a good hitter. 435 feet is American League leading 24th home run, ties it at two. Oswald allowed three runs on seven hits in seven, struck out nine. 3-2 Texas in the sixth, Brad Osmus. Into right center, runners on second and third, they'll both score. Now it's 4-3 Houston. Park would have to leave in the eighth, and he'd have a Mike Hampton moment in the dugout. Park gave up five earned on seven hits and seven and 230, walked five guys. Top nine, Lance Berkman. Up Todd Van Poppel, solo shot is 24th, and the Astros win 6-5. Oswald. Now 20 and 7, 3.02 in his 37 career major league starts. Conversely, there's Chan Ho. He threw 122 pitches in this game, only 69 for strikes. Houston now with a 3-1 lead in this year's silver boot competition. Oh, Canada. Expos and Jays in Toronto, eh? Top six, Brian Schneider facing Roy Halladay. Halladay to third. Orlando Cabrera safe. Runners at first and third. Listen to this play. That's catcher Ken Huckabee screaming three. Gave Halliday the call, thought he had the better angle. Look again, Cabrera halfway to third by the time Halliday even gets to the ball. So Huckabee made the wrong call. No chance for Halliday to get it to third in time. Huckabee should have screamed one and gotten the sure up. Next batter, Brad Wilkerson. And he does sky one in Sky Dome. Oh, All Mondesi is there. One out, but again, it should have been the second out. That's important because Jose Macias is up next. He goes to second. Toronto gets the fours. That's only out number two, and Orlando Cabrera scores. So we're tied at one. Top seven, Fernando Tatis. And that's gone. A solo shot is ninth. Halliday allowed two runs on four hits and seven. Pitched a nice one, but made that big mistake, and it cost him. Montreal wins 2-1. Tony Armas Jr. proved to 3-0 in his last five starts. Watch out for the Expos. They've won 11 of 14, and they've added Bartolo Colon, who was expected to join the Expos Saturday. Could make his Montreal debut Tuesday night at Atlanta. Vlad Guerrero, 0 for 4, his 20 game hits. Scott Rowan doing what he does best. Watch this again. Full extension and a great catch. Top four. Phillies down two zip. Pat Burrell, three run home run. Top five. Jimmy Rollins, solo home run. Sixth inning, Jeremy Giambi, home run. Still top six, Scott Rowland, deep to center. Billy scoring all of their six runs as a result of homers. Burl now with 19. Rollins has seven. Jeremy Giambi, his seventh as a Philly, and Scott Rowland picks up his 11th as the Phillies win it by the score of 6-2. to two. Philly has won 4-5 of five as they match their season high with four home runs. Travis Driscoll, his first career loss after starting 5-0, and oh, gave up six earned runs in six innings. And Burl now for the Phillies, 10 RBIs in his last five games. Pirates in Detroit, a loss puts the Tigers 25 games under 500. Top five, Jack Wilson facing Mark Redmond to first. Randall Simon. Turns his ankle, throws to second, and goes off Jensen Kendall's back. Run scores on the air by Simon. It's 2 0 Pittsburgh. You know, well, when you live in Detroit, you get used to stuff like this. I mean, after all, the Lions, 2 and 14 last year. Not so good. All right, back to the baseball game. Top six, Kevin Young. He is good. Three for four to left. George Lombard off of him and into center. Redmond allowed two earned on nine hits and seven. Ramos Ramirez in a third. Young to second. Ramirez later scored. It's 3 nothing. But, you know, again, we're talking Detroit here. The shock loss to the Miami Saul in overtime. The Saul, of course, named after an elderly Jewish gentleman. The Miami Saul! Excuse me! Not by any. These seats are no good! But, of course, the Red Wings, they're good. They won the Cup. So, you know, pretty much all Detroit's got going for it.
Scoreless ninth gets Mike Williams, his 22nd save. 3-1 is your final. Pirates win for just the fourth time in 14 games.